The Biden campaign is hoping to flip the narrative following Thursday's debate. A new campaign ad is hitting the airwaves in battleground states. Did you see Trump last night? I mean it sincerely, the most lies told in a single debate. He lied about the great economy he created. He lied about the pandemic he bought. Let's bring in our political panel, Joel Payne and Christian Ramos. Joel is CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist, and Christian is also a Democratic strategist who served as an aide for former Senate Majority Harry Reid. Uh, Harry Reid, excuse me, gentlemen, great to see you here. Um, so, in that ad, conveniently left out, Joel, of course, is the president's own debate performance. Mm -hmm. um, instead, clips from the rally the next day on teleprompter uh, with supporters. Um, how do you assess how Democrats are handling this right now? I mean, we had the press secretary today fielding questions from reporters, not answering a lot of them, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, how is the White House doing here? That was a good ad. Um, <laughs> I, I do think it was a good ad. I don't think it's going to solve all the problems that the president and his team are managing at the moment right now. I think what Democrats um, are doing is giving the president some space and giving his team some space to kind of analyze the political environment right now. I mean, essentially, you had an extinction level event <laughs> with that yeah. debate last week. And I think what you have now is a lot of fallout and people just trying to assess what the fallout is. It's clear that inside the Beltway, establishment, grass top Democrats, there's some growing consensus um, and concern mm -hmm. about President Biden. What's not mm -hmm. clear is that has that gotten to voters yet? And I think mm -hmm. you're looking for polling, you're looking for any data points mm -hmm. um, to make that case if you're someone who thinks the president should get out or mm -hmm. if you're someone on the president's team who wants to encourage him to stay in. And that's what we're doing at the moment. I mean, speaking of that polling, Christian, our polling showed that nearly half of Democrats don't want Biden to be the nominee. Whether he steps aside or not, and that's still such a you know tall order, essentially, he's given all indications that he's staying in. How do Democrats possibly make the case to voters turn out for our guy when they're voicing their own concerns about this very person? Well, I'm pretty sure in that same poll, more than half of Republicans also don't want Donald Trump to be their nominee. So there is that. I, I hear what you're saying. But like to answer your question, listen, Joe Biden has an incredible record to run on. He has a lot to say. He has a lot to do. Did he have a bad night <laughs> on Thursday? Extinction level, to, you know, event. Uh, Buster Rhymes reference there. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it was bad. But he has four more months to put it all together. Really, they have to make their case. And yesterday's Supreme Court case that just happened with Donald Trump, to me, that's the type of thing that really focuses the election focuses voters on what exactly is at stake here. Can we all imagine an imperial Donald Trump presidency right now? If that guy gets into office and does whatever he wants, that should be a part of the conversation that we're having as we discuss yeah. uh, the post debate. But, but Democrats have been making the argument, to your point, that democracy is at stake here. We have to do, in their words, we have to do everything we can to defeat Donald Trump. And yet, Biden as the nominee, a lot of them are also saying, look, we don't think he can do that. Yeah, and I think what the president and his team are trying to assess is whether or not that is that is still the default. I think that there's strong belief among his team that they can manage the fallout from the debate and they can keep his viability. But I, I want to pick up on Christian's point. OK, we've spent it's been five days since the debate. Mm -hmm. There's 100 left. These days are gold. That's the only thing in, in, in politics yeah. you can't get back yeah. is time. So right. instead of spending the last five days focusing, laser focused on Donald Trump, his lies, his um, misstatements on stage mm -hmm. last week, and all of the mm -hmm. terrible things he wants to do with Project uh, 2025, Democrats have been talking about the future mm -hmm. of this ticket. And whether or not talking about the future of this ticket is harmful, the fact that Mm -hmm. The focus is not fully 100 percent trained on Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the last week so disastrous. Yeah, and especially you have Democrats who are, you know, wanting to go out and make this argument from him who are saying that they haven't even heard from the president. I mean, you both worked on Capitol mm -hmm. Hill for a long time. Work, you both worked for Harry Reid. Christian, I'm curious, you know, we heard today from Lloyd Doggett, a, a congressman from Texas, um, being the first out there to say Biden shouldn't run for your election. Is that is he going to be an anomaly, do you think, or do you think that's going to allow more Democrats to follow suit and be public about this? Well, I think here's here's where the rubber meets the road. 
at the end of the day, there is no leverage to remove Joe Biden from the top of the ticket. That is a decision that he has to make in consultation with his family, looking at the poll and hearing what, what different members of the party are saying. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand right now, the enemy here is Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the guy that we're running against. That's the issue at hand. Those conversations, they're happening absolutely in Capitol Hill. Everybody's mm -hmm. having these conversations. I'm a little astonished at how much these conversations are popping up in the media. That, again, is Joe Biden's decision at the end of the day. Yeah. Can I, yeah. Caitlin, can I pick yeah. up on that, too? I, I think also the House is a really, um, it is an interesting body to look at kind of this moment mm -hmm. that we're in through. It's mm -hmm. because the House is the firewall. You have a moment where the Senate does not look good for Democrats. And a lot of mm -hmm. Democrats, I think, view the House as kind of like the firewall, the last stand. Mm -hmm. If Donald Trump were to win, that's the only place that you could blunt a Trump MAGA mm -hmm. agenda. So hearing from people like former Speaker Pelosi, hearing from mm -hmm. close associates of President Biden, like Jim mm -hmm. Clyburn, um, hearing from Democrats who are on the front lines in these tough mm -hmm. seats, like Jared Golden and folks mm -hmm. like that, I think that's where a lot of the action is going to be. And mm -hmm. for folks who are trying to see over the mountains where, where this is going next, I think the mm -hmm. House is a really interesting place to get information. Yeah, and we'll see kind of whether the money starts flowing to those down-ballot races instead. Uh, you know, I was talking to some Democratic donors today who were supportive of the president, but were saying, look, we don't really have any other options at this point. I mean, the idea of him stepping aside and then having kind of a free-for-all on the Democratic side for a nominee would introduce perhaps more chaos. I'm curious what you think about that. So no, no, this is a really important point you're making. There is an anti-MAGA majority out there, right? Since 2016, 2018, 2020, 2022, the special elections, they always come out and vote against mm -hmm. MAGA. They always come out and vote against Donald Trump. He is mm -hmm. historically unpopular and a threat to our democracy and our country. We need to give those voters the clarity to come back to the Democrats and to vote in mass against Donald Trump. Joe Biden could be that candidate. He is that candidate currently. But mm -hmm. again, he has to make that decision in consultation with his family, his friends, uh, polls. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm also thinking about, you know, at a time where the campaign should be trying to reach out to independent voters, mm -hmm. those who, to your point, don't want to vote for Trump, want to vote against him, but are looking at Biden and thinking, is this really, you know, this Democrats are now focused on shoring up their base of support, which is fragile. That's exactly right. I mean, that's the thing that's so devastating also about what happened last week is not only obviously the fallout from Joe Biden as by his own acknowledgement, like not performing well, that moment, which was designed by the campaign to kind of clarify the race and to get your base rallied around President Biden. There was a missed opportunity there because what you needed to do was get base Democrats who have kind of been slow to come home. Yeah. You needed them to come home faster. And mm -hmm. so I think right now the president has to stabilize support and then he can mm -hmm. get back, um, you know, assuming he is going forward as the nominee, he can get back to mm -hmm. bringing those Democrats home because the fall off in public opinion polling, like CBS polling, mm -hmm. has been with traditional Democratic constituencies. Right. I mean, I'm thinking of... Nikki Haley supporters, who the president has said, look, you can come to my side. Looking at that performance, it's, it, you know, what do you, are you concerned that it, you know, may have reinforced doubts that people already had about the president? Well, what that debate did was reinforce everyone's opinion of Donald Trump. Donald Trump lied repeatedly. His January 6th... Yeah, but nobody is talking about that today. I know. That's, that's the problem. That's why I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to re-inject it into this conversation. But no, to your, to your point... Look, again, the, the president mm -hmm. has to make this decision in mm -hmm. council with his, his family, his friends, and, and his political advisors, and, and we have to go from there. And, and we are also curious about, you know, potentially Tim Ryan, who we just talked to, mentioned that he wants Kamala Harris to be at the top of the ticket. We actually have our own Nydia Cavazos, who is interviewing Kamala Harris right now. Whoa. Let's see if we can take that live here. And get our first you reactions get from the your vice president. Take on yesterday's Supreme Court ruling on presidential immunity. We know that Chief Justice Roberts said that the president is not above the law. What's your take on this? Well, let's just be clear. It's one of the foundational principles in our system of justice that no one is above the law. And when we have a candidate in Donald Trump who's openly said he'll be a dictator on day one, that he will weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. It is very likely that he could be immune from those kinds of acts. And we have to take seriously the stakes 
of this election in terms of the thought that we could have a president in the White House who thinks he's immune um, and able then to make decisions with that office that include weaponizing the Department of Justice against his political enemies or being a dictator on day one. And speaking about stakes, you just came out of a fundraiser. We know that many in your party have expressed concerns about President Biden's health. Just this morning, Congressman Doggett said that he's calling on President Biden to withdraw from the race, given that there's too, there's too much at stake to risk a Trump victory. What's your response to this? Look, Joe Biden is our nominee. We beat Trump once, and we're going to beat him again, period. Are you ready to lead the country if necessary? I am proud to be Joe Biden's running mate. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so you can see there, obviously, the, the, the biggest topic of, uh, of the day at the end there. Um, you know, she has been mentioned by some, as I mentioned, you know, Tim Ryan has been advocating for her at the top of the ticket. What are you all hearing about that possibility? Oh, look, I hear Democrats just as much as they feel good about, um, you know, Joe Biden or have felt good about Joe Biden. They feel just as good about Kamala Harris. And I think it's no small consequence that Kamala Harris has really spent a lot of time building up her public profile, really sharpening her public appeal. Um, I think she was strong there. I think she was strong the night of the debate defending President Biden. And um, I'd imagine in any scenario, you're going to see a lot more Kamala Harris. I mean, it's notable that she just did that poll side right there <laughs> with our own Nydia Cavazos. I mean, that signals that she wants to be out there, right? Kamala Harris has been on fire. She's out there. She is an incredible at prosecuting the case on reproductive rights against Donald Trump. I, I hear a lot of good things about her right now from the mm -hmm. operatives chattering class out in here in, in, in D.C. And notably in the debate, the president really struggled to articulate the party's position on reproductive rights. Um, good gift for Nydia. Uh, great gift for <laughs> Nidia Cavazos. Let's give her a big shout out right there, our star campaign reporter, uh, Christian Angel. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it.